Welcome to this tutorial where we are going to be discussing the endoplasmic reticulum, uh, particularly the rough endoplasmic reticulum, remembering that we have two types, but we'll focus on the smooth component in another tutorial. So first off, we have our eukaryotic cell here, which is particularly important when we're discussing rough endoplasmic uh, reticulum because it's an organelle that is continuous with the outer membrane of our nucleus lipid bilayer. So if we draw it here, we can see that it's a uh, network of uh, tubes and sacs that's going to be continuous with our nucleus. And you can see I have these uh, strange holes drawn all over the nucleus as well, which we refer to as our nuclear pores. Uh, we have pores on our skin, right, so things can get in and out. Well, our nucleus is no different, and some of these pores are going to lead directly to the connected membrane of our rough endoplasmic reticulum. So it's a tubule system that is going to be continuous with our nuclear envelope, and we can't really see much from here, so let's just zoom into our endoplasmic reticulum and nucleus here. And we're going to see straight away that it's quite a lot more complex than this little sketch I had up the top. So this is what our endoplasmic reticulum looks like in a three-dimensional kind of sense. So we can see the nucleus uh, at the top, the circular area. So that's our nucleus with all the holes or nuclear pores, which are going to be leading into our endoplasmic reticulum. And we can see straight away here how complex the uh, endoplasmic reticulum is. So let's focus quickly on naming the separate areas of the uh, organelle that we're looking at. So we call the membrane network the cystone. So all of this uh, folding of the tubules we're going to refer to as the cystone of the endoplasmic reticulum. So we'll write that down here quickly. Our membrane folds of our rough endoplasmic reticulum are called the cisternae. We refer to the inside area, so the inside surface of that cisternae, the lumen. So that's going to be the area that's enclosed within the structure. So the actual inside of the organelle itself is the lumen of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And I haven't actually said so far why we call it the rough endoplasmic reticulum or what it's even doing, what its job is. So let's talk about that right now. Why is it called rough? Well, if you can see, I'm drawing all of these dots, these red dots, all over the outer membrane of our endoplasmic reticulum, which are going to be ribosomes. And if you remember, our ribosomes are the little uh, protein factories, I guess you could say, of our cell. So they're going to be studying the entire surface of the outer membrane of our rough endoplasmic reticulum. So we'll write that down. Ribosomes. That's why we call it rough. And if it's going to be studded with ribosomes, we can automatically pretty safely assume that it's going to have something to do with protein synthesis, right? Well, that's exactly what it's going to be doing our proteins are going to be synthesized through our ribosomes, which we know are responsible for translation and protein creation. But our rough endoplasmic reticulum is then going to be able to uh, process and fold all of these uh, proteins that our ribosomes are making. So new proteins are folded and processed within the lumen of our rough endoplasmic reticulum. So we're starting to get a much clearer picture of what's going on here now. We know that our ribosomes synthesize new proteins and then that protein is going to go into the lumen of our rough endoplasmic reticulum where it can be folded and processed. But that's not all that's going to be happening. Uh, like everything within our cell, it's all working together. So we'll just write down quickly that our Rough endoplasmic reticulum is also going to be working with our Golgi apparatus. And it's working with the Golgi apparatus to ensure the correct uh, end destination for our proteins. So I've just drawn a small picture of the Golgi apparatus here. 
And I'm going to show right here that we have these newly folded and processed proteins from our rough endoplasmic reticulum going to be uh, transported toward the Golgi apparatus where they're going to be processed even further. And the Golgi apparatus is going to then send those proteins off to wherever they need to go. And so we'll draw a uh, secretory vesicle which the Golgi apparatus is going to create which is going to contain the proteins that are eventually going to leave the cell. And that leads us to a huge point that we need to remember. The rough endoplasmic reticulum, or the ribosomes of the rough endoplasmic reticulum, are going to be responsible for manufacturing all secretory proteins. So all proteins that are destined to leave the cell are going to be manufactured and are folded and processed here at the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And that's important because we know we have other ribosomes which are just freely floating around the cell, but their job is not to produce proteins that are leaving the cell. They're all going to have uh, intracellular purposes. And that's going to cover all of the basics of our rough endoplasmic reticulum, but quickly, before we finish the video here, I'll just outline all of this uh, endoplasmic reticulum that we have up toward the top here. And just note that this area isn't studded with ribosomes, and that's because it's part of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And we'll talk about the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and its job in the next video. So our rough endoplasmic reticulum is going to be responsible for the folding and processing of proteins that are created by our ribosomes, it's an intracellular organelle that's associated closely with our nuclear envelope and it's part of the cell's endomembrane system so it has its own plasma membrane. I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.